Joining me now, Melody Barnes. She's the co-director of the University of Virginia Democracy Initiative and a former director of the White House Domestic Policy Council under Barack Obama. She also worked on the Obama-Biden transition team. Melody, it is great to see you again. And I guess I need to ask you how this time is different from all other times. Because in all other times, generally speaking, the person who lost, I was going to say the, 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 the guy who lost, uh, admitted he lost, and, and there was generally an active move toward handing over the administration smoothly. We don't know if that's going to happen. Well, first of all, good morning. It is a pleasure to be with you, and it is morning in America and indeed around the world again. You're exactly right. When we started the Obama transition, we had the benefit of a Bush White House that from the top down said, we are going to work with you. This is about the peaceful transition of power. And that was the directive that spread across the administration. So when, when we had to begin going into the 15 departments, the hundreds of agencies, looking at issues of personnel and policy and litigation, we had the benefit of a cooperative administration. And now we have the, we're, the potential undermining of a president that will not concede. And it's unclear exactly what that will mean in terms of the transition. But we're also fortunate that we have a president-elect who was there in 2008, 2009, who understands how to begin this process in a transition, understands the challenges not only in the executive branch, but also how to work with the, with the Congress based on his experience there. So let me ask you about this. I would imagine transition teams have evolved over time, but they generally involve buckets, right? There's a group that's going to deal with this, and there's a group that's going to deal with that. It strikes me that there may be a new group this time, and that is the group that's going to deal with, with what happens if the transition doesn't occur the normal way, i.e., there, there has been no concession speech. There have been several tweets this morning by Donald Trump uh, uh, questioning the legitimacy of the election. We don't know when that will end. So someone's actually got to be thinking about the fact that what happens at noon on January 20th if Donald Trump just hasn't arrived at the conclusion that uh, 75 million Americans have? Well, I would hope that we would not be in that moment of constitutional crisis. I mean, certainly a concession is the appropriate thing, um, but it isn't necessary when, in fact, the electors are certified and those votes are counted. Um, that is the moment. And we know, based on the information we have today, what we what should and we believe will happen when those electoral, the Electoral College is counted in December. But remember, the transition work has been underway for many weeks, um, in fact, months. It is the only responsible thing to do. So the preparation, given the challenges, we've talked about it all morning, of COVID-19, the task force that the president-elect plans to announce, also, quite frankly, what will happen if after next week's argument in the Supreme Court, the Affordable Care Act is overturned? Looking at the not only the health care, but the economic implications of COVID-19 and a host of other issues as signaled by the fact that the, uh, the president-elect has already announced some of the things that he intends to do with the Paris Climate Accord, World Health Organization, with regard to DREAMers and other issues. So this work is already underway. Very exhausted people are already have their shoulder to the wheel. And, and you make two interesting points. One is that in December, the electors will uh, formally elect the president of the United States after every state has certified its results. And at noon on January 20th, a new president is sworn in. That is of no question. No one else has any, uh, any say in that matter. That's how it happens. And whatever has to happen that day will happen. Uh, but generally speaking, in these groups that deal with the transition, there are members of the outgoing administration. In fact, uh, traditionally, there's a very nice letter that goes out. Uh, George H.W. Uh, w. Bush uh, left a, a letter that of note for Bill Clinton in which he wrote, uh, you will be our president when you read this note. I wish you well. I wish your family well. Uh, that all should happen. Do you know that there are members of the Trump administration whose job it is to be involved in this transition who are doing their work? Well, I don't have that information. I will say that four years ago, when this process was underway, I was concerned then because it appeared that the incoming Trump administration had no sense of the import of a transition process. You only have a very brief amount of time to do what in business would amount to the largest takeover of an entity in the world. Uh, 4,000 
uh, individuals in terms of personnel. You've got cabinet appointments, sub-cabinet appointments. Um, you've got the work in those departments and agencies. I remember walking into my office on January 20th and the phone was ringing and the person on the other end had a substantive question. So you've got all of that underway. And if you don't have an administration that understood that when they were walking on the door, I have deep concerns about those that are struggling to stay in when they should be walking out of the door. But I hope that uh, common sense, a belief in the country, a responsibility to the country will prevail and that that work will be, in fact, be underway. And in fact, it's statu there are statutory requirements now that govern the transition, that those things will be in effect and for the good of the nation, the transition will begin. And the good news is that the president, uh, the incoming president, uh, was the vice president for two terms, and the vice president is a United States senator, so they know a thing or two about governing. Melody, uh, good to see you. Melody Barnes is the co-director of the Democracy Initiative at the University of Virginia, uh, and she was the uh, she was a domestic policy advisor under President Obama.